Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Ask Service Monster Show, where you have questions about your service business and we have your answers. Today, our ongoing Facebook monetization number three. For all of you guys who think we're a little too heady, that we do too much theoretical, today is your day. We're gonna go to the mat and be super practical by showing you directly how to use Facebook Ad Manager. We're gonna talk about a handful of things. The first one I'm gonna focus on is kind of the structure. How does Facebook want you to set things up? We'll talk about audiences. And we'll talk briefly the relationships between campaigns, ad sets, ads, and content. It can all get horribly confusing. And even if you know what you're doing, you might not know what you're doing. So um, if all you do is boost stuff, you're missing an enormous opportunity to really take control of your advertising that you run into Facebook. So I invite you, come join us, listen to me kind of talk about how to use Facebook. And then a very cool little thing that I give you at the end is a naming convention that you can use to keep your head from exploding because things can get horribly complicated even for veterans like myself, depending on the platform. If I go to my mobile ad manager and I look at my ads there, they look slightly different. And if you haven't named them in a way that makes sense, things can get messy. So let's take a look. Um, we'll dive in deep. Stay with us because it gets complex. All right, guys, here we are at the uh, Facebook site, and I'm gonna show you a little bit about Ads Manager. And while I do this, I'm gonna talk about a couple key things that'll keep you unconfused. Because if you don't have these basic concepts, man, it gets really confusing. Let's take a minute and, and break some stuff down for you. So obviously here I am Facebook, and if you click this little drop down arrow, you get um, access to managing ads. So you can create an ad directly, you can manage ad as well. Um, if you're on your page, and I'll jump to Service Monsters Facebook page, if you have a page and you're set up and everything's running correctly, I'm sure you've seen it, uh, you can boost your posts. So my recommendation is boosting posts is fine when you're first getting started. Once you understand the structure and how you wanna put ads together, um, this isn't a great idea because it creates a whole bunch of background stuff for you that's not very classified very well or um, very easy to understand, frankly. So we'll skip that. I'm gonna jump right into the Manage Ads app. Okay, so we're here at the Ads Manager. Um, if you go to this main menu here, you can see, you can look at audiences, pixels, and then jump into Power Editor. Talk about Power Editor for a second. That's a more advanced um, site for managing your Facebook ads. Don't get confused though. Ads Manager and Power Editor are essentially the same thing. The only difference between the two is Facebook is a little more liberal with their changes and their complexity within Power Editor. And so sometimes they'll roll out new features and they don't work as good as they should until they get it dialed in, right? So um, watch that. If you're new to Facebook, Power Editor is probably not what you want to be using. You can do some bulk stuff, which is nice, um, but for the most part, most of the features that you're gonna want have been honed within Power Editor and then moved to the Ads Manager. So that's the first thing. That's really confusing for a lot of people. Okay, the other thing is, let's dive into audiences. Now, we talked about audiences last week and their relevance and what type you can create, um, but I would suggest instead of picking out your audience while creating your ad, you actually set up your audience ahead of time. So here I can do all kinds of fun things, creating an audience, um, a custom audience. This is where you would upload your list or get it from um, app connections. You can also uh, create a lookalike audience. So same thing, you would choose your source, um, another audience that you've uploaded, and then say what percentage of fuzziness would you like? At 1%, what you're saying is the profiles almost have to match directly. Um, so if they like sports or they like uh, sushi, whatever the case may be, right? 200 metrics that Facebook allows you to target. So if you go way up to 10, what you'll get is, you know, people who like sushi and fishermen, right? So um, it's kind of a broad broadening. 
I wouldn't mess with this too much in your lookalike audience. I would leave that as low as possible. Although, because you're targeting a demographic, you may go against that, and I would totally create an argument for that too, and then make that a little bit bigger, right? Um, and then, of course, you can also create or um, find your saved audiences, which you can create a new audience and then save it as part of a campaign creation. Again, I would suggest just coming here and creating one though. I'm not gonna show you how to create audiences. This is kind of more of a high level thing. Um, of course, it's, it's you know, go top down, right? Fill out your name, um, <clears throat> see if you wanna target any audience that you've already created, uh, so on and so on and so on. So we're just gonna skip all that. I just wanted to basically show you this is where you're gonna maintain your audience list. Let's talk about pixels for a second. Um, I won't show you how to set them up in this video, but I will do that here in the next uh, few videos. What we're looking at here is essentially not a whole lot, <laughs> but it gives you the ability to set your pixel up. And so you can copy and paste your code and basically just put this right on the web pages that you wanna track. Very much like Google Analytics in that regard. It will start tracking page views and content views. In order to get leads registration completes, purchases, you have to install an action. Um, and so you've got to put the pixel as part of the process. So either on a landing page or get a little geeky here as part of your JavaScript code. If I go to uh, PF11, a little JavaScript I've whipped up, this is getting really geeky, but um, on the success of an Ajax post, uh, let's go ahead and post a Facebook tracking lead. Um, so that will make sense to about 10% of you. The other, otherwise, don't worry about it too much. You don't need to know that for what we're talking about. Just know that you can install a pixel on your web page um, and then track it. And if you want to track the results of actions, like filling out a form or making a purchase, you can track that back to Facebook as well. And then your costs per sale, your costs per lead, you can figure out all of that, which is pretty cool. All right. Go into the ads manager now directly, which is where you're gonna live. And you can see here there's three tabs uh, that I wanna draw your attention to. Campaigns, ad sets, and ads. And to make things simple, I'm just gonna filter based off of active campaigns. Now, when you create a campaign, they actually do a pretty good job. If I create a very high level campaign here, they do a pretty good job of walking you through setting it up, but not necessarily educating you on the different pieces. So we saw the tabs for campaigns, ad sets, and ads. And you can see here, I'm creating a new campaign. Um, it's actually a new ad, so I'm doing it all in one fell swoop. We're in the campaign section right now with objective. You have your ad set, and then here's your ad, okay? And I can't move forward until I set my campaign up. Inside campaigns, there are ad sets, one or more of them, zero if you have a useless campaign. Um, and then within each ad set, there is an ad. Now campaigns are tricky because they establish the objective. And I'm not gonna debate on the merits of how Facebook set this up. Me and my marketing manager um, think that they could have tweaked this a little bit, but I get it for simplicity of programming. This is already a complex issue. Um, but essentially your campaigns are nothing more than a place to put ad sets and define your objective. So um, Facebook defines objectives in three categories, awareness, consideration, and conversion. And I'm not gonna go into all of these. You can certainly go find the ones. Uh, most common you're gonna wanna use are lead generation, um, engagement, and traffic. Uh, conversions are great too, especially if you set your pixels up properly. If you have an online store, right, you can do a handful of things there. Um, local awareness and awareness campaigns, brand awareness, those are great. Um, I would typically lean towards video views, but I have set up some successful brand awareness campaigns. Um, anyways, it's about getting the attention of people, right? So every time you click on this, it'll tell you what your goal is and what you're trying to bring as far as objective. Once you've established your objective, then you can set up your ad set and your ad. Your ad set is simply, um, it's not simply, <laughs> it's an audience. So this is the target audience you're gonna be focusing on. Um, you've got some placement 
decisions, usually just set those to automatic, and then your budget and schedule is controlled by your ad set. Now, if you have one ad underneath your ad set, it may look like the ad and the ad set are the same thing, especially if you've done a boost. So be careful of that. Um, but you can have more than one ad in each ad set. Now think about this. If you tell Facebook, I want to spend 50 bucks on my ad set, and you create two videos, you're targeting the same audience, and you're targeting the same budget with those two videos. And Facebook is going to deliver both of those videos, and depending on their relevance, their interactions, they may favor one video over another in order to get your goal that you've targeted, whether it's leads or conversions or purchases or video views, whatever the goal is, right? Um, and then move that precedent, that video up higher. So if you've got four, five, six videos, Facebook's going to do a good job of mingling those up in a way that produces the best results. They want you to have amazing results because they want you to devote more and more of your marketing budget on Facebook. Makes sense to me, right? And then your ads. The ads themselves contain the copy, the content. Um, now, it's not the content themselves. This is another confusing thing. The ad is a wrapper around the content. So you have your content, which is your video that you published on your um, Facebook site, or it's a picture that you've created that symbolizes an advertisement. Although images are tricky, don't have too much text within there, right? Um, but you have your content and then you take that content and you put it into an ad. An ad defines the format, um, the media, any text or links that is in the ad itself. So that's the breakdown. All right, so how does this all make sense in the real world? So I go to my ads manager. Um, you'll see I have my campaigns and I've just got a couple here for an example. Um, you'll notice that I have a naming convention and I would strongly encourage this. This is my campaign list and we proceed every name with the objective. So in this case, it's traffic, video views, conversions, and engagement. Those are the objectives of those individual campaigns. Then we give them a name. Evergreen is just a constant drumbeat, just keeps rolling. Um, these are the YouTube campaigns that we want to push for our YouTube uh, channel. Um, video view evergreen content. So this one's dedicated to traffic. This one's dedicated to video views. We want to play them against each other and see which ones work better. And I just set most of these up. So um, you know, we've got some, we've got some stuff that's performed really well, uh, but I'm not going to show you that. <laughs> uh, conversions. So this campaign is dedicated towards getting conversions and leads converted traffic to the website. And this is of the evergreen nature too. So the name of campaign is evergreen. This campaign is, uh, dedicated towards engagement and we've named it newsletter because it basically is targeting our newsletter list and delivering newsletter like content to their news feeds. Right? So it's a very specific audience we're working with. Um, let's do one of the evergreen content. So if I jump into, um, actually, let's do this. Because of how I name them, we're going to take a look at this. If I go to my ad sets without selecting any of them, I get all of the ad sets. Now, check this out. If I go back to campaigns and I click on the traffic evergreen, there, I've got two ad sets within that campaign. I know the target or the objective, I know the campaign, and then I know the audience. So the remember the ad set is the audience. And so what I've done is said, let's make the name preceding the campaign name in the ad set, the name of the audience we're targeting. So here we're targeting an audience we call everyone, which is all the people that we want to target. It's about 2 million people actually. It's way bigger than it probably needs to be, but we are in our early stages of uh, uh, prototyping. So we start wide and then we'll go narrow as we determine who is um, reacting. Then if I click on the ad set, I'm gonna go down to the ads tab. And this is the ads that are running in that ad set. So I've got two running right now. One is called a 15 years video and the other one's a, a surf video. Um, and uh, they're, they're both service monster ads. I mean, they're direct ads. But I know what the goal of the campaign was, what the campaign was, what the ad set was, and who the audience we're targeting was, and then the name of the ad. And then, just I noticed this isn't quite right, I also end it with the media type. 
So if it's a video or an image, a carousel or what have you, I want to end it with, um, with that specific content type. So watch what happens now. Let's go ahead and just X all these guys. So no selections. And now, literally, these are all my active ads. Okay, it took a second to populate. But now that I've got a list of them, if I sort them by name, I've got, look at, here's my conversions. I've got one conversion campaign. We're targeting evergreen. It's an evergreen uh, um, campaign. We're targeting newsletter people, and it's the 15 years video. You'll see 15 years video, 15 years video. So imagine if you just named it 15 years video, because it's the same content three times. What would happen? Like when you get to this, it would just all say 15 years video. You'd be horribly confused as to what's going on. Same thing with ad sets and same thing with campaigns. So here's my ad sets. I know who the audience is and I know what the campaign and the objective of the campaign is. So a naming convention that I've just recently come up with because we're going to be running so many ads. These are just the ones I wanted to show you, demonstrate for the demo here. But you can see where this could get really, really tricky. So... So that, guys, that's what I wanted to touch on here. I know it's been a long video, but um, I wanted to kind of really give you the structure because if you have that knowledge going in, things get so much easier. Hey, so I hope that was beneficial. Um, we took a little bit of time to break that up for you. And I think that's content that people are trying to sell for thousands of dollars. For us, it's about getting you part of the Facebook advertising platform because when you guys are there, I can market to you. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, if you have any questions for us, send them to ask at servicemonster.net. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, sign up for the demo, 